All right, so in this video, we're going to explore some properties of parallelograms. So if I was told that this shape was a parallelogram, the first thing that I'm going to notice um, is that the top and the bottom are both parallel to each other. So I would say that IA is parallel to MH. And I would say that the left side is parallel to the right side. So I would be able to say that IM is parallel to AH. In addition to those two sides being parallel to each other, so this symbol means a parallel. In addition to them being parallel to each other, the opposite sides are also congruent to each other. So I would be able to also put the tick marks for congruent. Um, so tick marks for congruent are vertical lines or horizontal lines. Um, I know that's a little bit weird because the symbol for parallel kind of looks like that, but that's not what it is. So parallel are these arrows. When they're congruent, remember congruent means equal. So we would be able to say that IA, segment IA, is congruent to segment MH. And we would be able to say that IM is congruent to AH. That means that these two are going to have the same length, and then these two are also going to have the same length. In addition to that, um, we've already talked about this in the last video, but we talked about the angles of, um, of a parallelogram. So each of these angles is called a vertex angle. So this angle right here, angle HMI, this is a vertex angle. This angle right here, MIA, this is a vertex angle. IAH, this is a vertex angle, and AHM, this is a vertex angle. So all four of these are the vertex angles. And so let me just list them here. So the vertex angles are gonna be angle HMI, angle MIA, angle IAH, and angle AHM. And with those vertex angles, if they are opposite from each other, they're gonna be congruent. So opposite vertex angles are congruent. So that means that this angle here matches this angle here. And then also this angle here is also going to be congruent to this angle here. So those two are equal and those two are equal. And then hopefully you also remember we also talked about consecutive vertex angles. So consecutive vertex angles are going to be supplementary. So remember that means that they add up to 180. So we would say that these two angles, so angle HMI plus angle MIA is going to equal 180 degrees. Um, angle MIA plus angle IAH is gonna equal 180 degrees. So that's gonna be this one plus this one's 180, this one plus this one's 180. These two are also gonna add up to 180 and these two are also gonna add up to 180. So angle IAH plus angle AHM is gonna give us 180. And then finally, angle AHM and angle HMI are going to give you 180. So that's the rule with these uh, different angles. 
And then the last thing that I want to talk about in terms of these parallelograms are some lines that actually are not drawn in the picture. And those lines are going to be this line right here from M to A. This line right here is AM. And this line right here from I to H. So those two types of lines have a special name. And the name for those lines, so I'm gonna add some words here. So we would say that I, H, and M, A are diagonals. So that's the name we give to these segments. We say that they're called diagonals. And there's a special rule with parallelograms. Um, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. That means that they cut each other in half. So if you think about what that means, that means that this point, which is where they intersect, it's not like this is going to be different from this. If they bisect each other, that means they cut each other in half. So that means that this segment length, let me go ahead and give you guys a letter here. So let's call this um, the letter G. So from M to G is going to be the same length as from G to A. That's what, when they bisect each other, it means it cuts it into two equal pieces. So I would be able to say that MG is congruent to GA. And then I would also be able to say that this uh, length from I to G is the same length as from G to H. So because they bisect each other, these two pieces are equal and these two pieces are equal. Also, this one piece just from M to G is going to be half of the length from M to A. So another way of saying that is I could say that um, MG is one half of MA. Right, so if I told you that the whole thing was 30, this little part would be 15 and this little part would be 15. And I could say that about this one too. I could say that IG is equal to half of IH. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of how those diagonals will work within a parallelogram. So we talked about the side lengths, we talked about the diagonals, and we talked about the angles. Now, the last thing before I finish this video is just going to be, um, or before I do some examples, uh, what special property would the parallelogram have if we turned it into a rhombus? So I don't know if you guys remember learning about rhombuses or rhombi, which is technically the proper way to say it if you're saying it plural. Um, so if we turned this into a rhombus, this is just gonna be our normal parallelogram. And then I turn it into this shape, which is a special parallelogram. And the special parallelogram that it is, is the rhombus. There are two other special parallelograms that we'll talk about in a different video. Um, but this is just a normal parallelogram. What happens when I change it into a rhombus? Can you tell what happened? What happened was all four of these sides became the same length. 
So the length from I to A is the same thing as from A to H, is the same thing as from H to M, is the same thing as from M to I. So these lengths are all congruent. So that's what makes something a rhombus. It has all four sides are congruent. All right, let's do a few examples and I'll be done. So let's make that a little bit bigger. All right, so in this parallelogram, if they said that from D to G, this length from here to here was 10, and then they ask us for GF and DF. So GF, which is this part of the line here, is gonna be the same as that part, 10. And then DF, which is the length all the way across, is gonna be 20. And I just got that from doing 10 plus 10. All right, for this one, uh, it says to find the length of the three missing sides of the rhombus. So it's really important that you guys read the directions. Uh, because this says rhombus, I know that all four sides are going to be equal. So I would just be able to say that this is also 19, this is also 19, and this is also 19. So not too tricky, um, but it has to be a rhombus for that to be true. Um, in this one, they just told us that it was a normal parallelogram, not a special parallelogram. So if it's just a normal parallelogram, only the opposite sides are congruent, not all four. So if this side is 72, I would be able to say that this side up here is also 72 because these two sides are equal to each other. And then if this side, it says is 55, this side would also be 55 because those opposite sides are equal to each other. And then lastly is a problem with our parallelogram angles. So remember the rule is that opposite angles are congruent. So if this is 68, this is also 68. And then consecutive angles add up to 180. So this one plus that one has to be 180. So I would just do 180 minus 68. So that's going to tell me that we've got, what is that, 112 degrees for this angle right here. And then the opposite angle down here would also be 112 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please message me on Remind. And this is not all of the information that we need to learn about parallelograms and rhombi, but I will make another video with more information so you guys have something to look forward to. Have a great day.